Hey, hey, oh, there we go. Hey, oh, okay, okay. You got the green screen? Yeah, I got the green screen. Man, awesome. he got the Hawaiian shirt. Look, he's looking. Yeah, see, man, you got it right, man. <laughs> we, Thomas Pritchard, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas, Thomas Pritchard. Hey, round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> the, the man. The, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The hoodest man on the street, Thomas Pritchard. I never seen, <laughs> I never seen somebody so hood be so beloved by white people. <laughs> Thomas Pritch, Thomas Pritchard and Marshawn Lynch. Those are the only two. Those are the yeah. only two. <laughs> no. How you doing, man? Man, I'm all right, man. This shit's like losing a big gig. So yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. Women, I'm doing all right. Yeah, for sure. Did you? you, you Man, I'm 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 hanging in there. My lady, uh, my lady is the one that gave me the idea to start doing these interviews. Got you. Yeah, I, I love your show. Oh man, oh man, it. I love it. Sure. Man, um, man, we we've been cracking up over your Instagram stories, but I didn't know how funny that was until Ernie told me to tune in, and I saw uh, some dog getting a lap dance. I saw. Uh, some kid with the, the the head shaved off and the top peeled back. I've seen so much funny stuff on there. Oh yeah, bro. Well, I I, I like I used to like MySpace. That was my shit. So I yeah. oh, I always I, back. I never use the internet to like to like I you know recently you think to make money off the internet, but for my life it's always been just to have fun and troll. Entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, so so you started so you started like so you got your big break at nine at nine years old when when most of us when most of us was just transitioning out of playing with uh you know action figures and things <laughs> you, you was get you was getting a contract man no not I mean yeah I mean yeah essentially yeah my grandmother was was getting the contracts right so mm -hmm. yeah okay. So did so for, from eight years old. Were you, were you what were you doing? Were you just playing in the church, or, or were you just were you playing gigs? Um, when I was yeah, when I was eight, I had a drum teacher. His name was uh, Curtis Newdall. He just passed away, but he was he was from Chicago, but he lived in the Bay Area, and he used to gig around town. And um, he met me at Guitar Center, and um, I was in a drum off. And it was one year I was in a like one round I was in a drum off. And he was like, I want to be your teacher. And then um, so like, he, he, he had so much, so many gigs that he would just let me do his gigs. Like he'll be like, man, I'm double booked. So you want to go play at the AT&T at the, um, AT Park or the Giant Stadium? So I go, play, I go play his gigs. I got videos of me playing his gigs at like nine. So I was like, <laughs> um, Rick James and like fucking all like Brick House and all like, all this shit that they be dancing to at the Catalyst Club in Santa Cruz on a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I play there. Yeah. Santa Cruz when I was like really young. So I learned how to play a lot of the funk, like a lot of the old school, you know, Rick James, James Brown tunes, a lot of the top 40 stuff that people like to dance to at the hippie spots. I learned that young. So I was gigging a little bit, but I wasn't, I wasn't going on tour, but I was playing right. around. My grandma would take me around. So you were you yeah. wasn't on you wasn't on you when did you start going on tour? When when was that? But from the time you were nine to I went on tour for the first time when I was like sixteen and seventeen. I went on tour with um Boots from the Coup. I was uh, I was playing oh. with the Coup. And um Boots Riley. Boots Riley, yeah. And uh, so yeah, I remember going out with Boots and Boots would Boots would hit the college circuit and we hit all around and that was like you know my senior year and you know junior year of high school and also um our Berkeley High my high school was actually like sophomore year we went to I think we went to Japan so we went oh, to Japan word year and then we went to um we went to Europe on another trip and so I was traveling and then like you know. I also grew up going to like church conventions. So my, you know, I would go to WA, so I see everybody. So I was used to traveling, but I wasn't like consecutively on, I wasn't in a tour bus is what I'm saying. So gotcha. um, when, can you tell us a little bit about when you went to, uh, when you went to Spain? Cause you put in the work. 
Mm. You you put in the work. Um, I, I I recall hearing hear you tell a story about when you went to uh to Spain and had to play over there, or or somewhere where you had to learn the language. Italy, I don't remember. Oh, um, well, I ended up. I went to Italy for a long time, and I there did it, not, Italy. There we go. Not fully. I didn't fully learn Italian, um, but I was out there for like three months, and I was playing with Eros Ramazzotti, and um, basically, you know. We were just, you know, when you leave, when you leave the country for that amount of time and you got family, it seems so long. So I went out there to play with him and basically I was just there for like two, three months at a time. And um, it was cool. It was just, it was crazy because like I always have, um, I've always like sought after to play with people who were outside of my comfort zone. You know what I mean? Playing with yeah. people who maybe play a different style of music or people who are like, you know, just come from a different background, you know. So um, when he called me, like, I got massive, like, I got bombarded with, like, six messages and calls from people who were like, Eros is looking for you, Eros is looking for you. And the way they do it there is the person who um, hooks you up with the artist, you know, they get a mo they get money for it. So, and he's mm -hmm. such a huge artist that people, they get a booking fee. They be like, oh, I found a drummer for you. And then, and then they try to hustle they trying to mm. hustle the drummer. They'd be like, man, the drummer got to pay me because he just hooked me up with this major gig. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how they did it. And I was like, this is kind of weird, but fuck it. They paying so much money, I got to do it. So um, <laughs> I also I also thought it was cool because, you know, playing, play, if, you can, if you can mingle and you could talk music and like life and you can get along and understand culture, eating food, all the shit you like to do with people that's outside of your culture, you could do that with anybody. If you could go to Italy and work and play fucking two, three hour sets and make the tour killing and it sounds great, I could go do that in another country. And so for me, it was just an opportunity to be able to widen my perspective, my perspective and widen my reach and network with people. You know what I mean? Now I have friends in Italy that have actually lived with me on the road, who know how I play night after night, know what I'm, my tendencies, know what makes me tick. So those people are going to be more willing to put in word for you because they know you, you know what I mean? So I'm making these yeah. connections with people all across the world. So now I'm playing with Residente and he's from Puerto Rico and we got a cast from Puerto Rico, we got a cast, people from uh, homeboys from Ger Germany, we got people from Argentina, we got you know, me from the Bay, we got people from Sacramento, um, people from Morocco, everyone's from somewhere else. And we're creating these like bonds that when people splinter off, I'm still building relationships. And I, that's and that's why what you said was kind of solid, but it's, it's kind of, it was, it was funny, but it's, it's solid because it's like, yes, I can, I'm the, I'm the blackest motherfucker that white people love. But yeah. it's, it's really because I gravitate towards everybody. Like yeah. I don't, I don't just like sit there and just, oh man, you black, let's kick it. Like I don't. Yeah. I, I do do that, but I don't only do that. You know what I mean? So I think it's important because you got to build your network as a musician, especially now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough time. I don't know. Well, you know when there's like, when there's a certain vibe about everybody, because the the best musicians have their own vibe you know what i mean so it's like you you pretty much can still communicate over the language of music like you know you you're just chopping it up like oh when, when you did that lick there or you know when drum speak you know that fill that you did in that part you know just, just it's just there's a common ground that we all reach even from different cultures because yeah. you know what i mean universal language for humans yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> everybody's human we all got you know, <laughs> people we all got yeah. the same organs and shit yeah but Man. um go go ahead were you about to say something well the first uh my first introduction to you thomas was um uh mars volta that was a huge band for me when i when i was in my early 20s and i would you know i would hear like these long ass takes of just just craziness going on just non-stop and um I I have a, a a question for you because I've I've always wanted to know this about this very particular album. Uh, the Bedlam and Goliath. Yeah. 
and I, you you were you were part of that album, right? Yes. So back in the day, one of my friends told me this, and uh, I rumors never been confirmed, but there's a tale about that album where y'all bought like a Ouija board on tour and then started communicating with these spirits. And then there was uh, the studio flooded almost immediately after. Is there any truth to that crazy story at all? I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't there when all that stuff was going on. Like when I, when I came in for that record, I was like the drums, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but making, especially records with like live music, mm -hmm. the only thing that matter at the beginning of recording the record is the drums. So like the first first part of the record was just me playing the drums for fucking two weeks. You know what I mean? And like oh, every, yeah, everybody just looking at me, you know what I mean? And fucking mm -hmm. judging me and talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it was. So okay. by the time it got to a place where it was like time to lay vocals and do, you know, guitars even, like I was gone, bro. I I, I uh. like the, I was gone so far to a point where, you know, we were we were on tour and I remember that they, this record is gonna come out, and then you know, you you don't know what this shit sounds like. I never been on a rock a rock record of that stature before, so mm -hmm. I didn't know what the mix sound like. I didn't know what nothing sound like. We get the record day. I think the day before it was gonna come out, we all hearing it, and we went to a taco spot. Now I was just in a car like melting, like this is. I had to turn it off. I was like, this is too much because I was going to skip. Right. Like. I wasn't there for all the um the 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 fucking Ouija board connection talking to the fucking spirit shit. I hear that too. And like, you know, I know, I mean, I've been in studio sessions where people have lost their mind, like with the Mars Volta. I've been in sessions where like we we would have people like literally crack. Like we'll be recording a record and like the it started off with the the engineer being the coolest dude in the world, and then you him like he be like song three now he's air drumming with you and then like day day five no day day four he's like turning the speakers upside down so the fucking woofer is at the top and the, the little part is at the bottom and we're just looking at him and then next thing you know we're like what happened to so and so and they're like so and so is at an airport he cracked his girlfriend looking for him so we oh. had, we've had shit like that like few times, like a couple times, like we we had a hard time keeping a tour manager, shit like that. But it it was never it was never no like me doing it. I was never like casting spells on them niggas and that shit like. That. <laughs> <laughs> I I was I was curious to see if you you know you were you experienced anything in that in that whole tale, but I, I no, feel you know yeah yeah. I, I mean at that you know. That time, bro, like sometimes like I've had, I've had, bro, sometimes you feel like you got spirits with you the whole time, bro. Like you sit there mm. and you don't even understand why shit is happening. You're like, why is this happening? Like, why is this happening? So for me, it's like my, my, I play with, you know, I play with suicidal tendencies. I play, mm -hmm. you know, I did, when I did suicidal tendencies, we would go out and we opened up for Slayer in like, fuck, I want to say like Montana. And we played at, <laughs> at this fucking, we played at a, um, at a, what's those, um, uh, not the, not the, um, not the, um, not the, what's the, the Masons, not the Masons, what's the other dudes called? The, um, ah, uh, they wear them fezzes. They wear fezzes, it's not the Israelites, is it? No, nah, bro, they called like, God damn it. I'm about to look this up. Some um, type of some some type of uh, 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 group that wears fezzes. The Shriners. The Shriners. The oh. Shriners. Shriners. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. So we played. I played. I played with Suicidal and Slayer in Montana at a Shriners building. Bruh. <laughs> I watch. I watch. I watch all these pictures on the wall. All this stuff, all these like I'm thinking they white dudes on campus with fucking goatee. I ain't never seen no shit like this, bro. <laughs> my is this is in Montana, home, bro. I'm not. I'm just saying my my spirit, God, fucking kicking it with me and hanging on, and my friends, all my ancestors. That shit is with me, bro. Cause I be in spots like that and be having weird energy. 
It's a spot in Milwaukee. Um, it's called the Rave. I think it's called the Rave. Bro, if you go downstairs, they got this one sign on the fucking, uh, on this chair that says, do not move this chair. If you move this chair, all the lights gonna go out. It's haunted. I don't, I be, I be, man, I be, bro, I be, Milwaukee. Coasting, I be coasting through evil, bro. I be just like, it's like I'm a, I be coasting through evil shit. I be coasting through shit that I don't need to be in. I be, and, and by the grace of God, bro. So I don't, a lot of that shit, I don't, I get spared the dude with the Ouija board. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That missed you. That missed you. <laughs> it missed you. You just hit all the other bumps along the way. It's all good. Just ducked it. <laughs> just ducked it. Shit. What, what, my, 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 introduction, my introduction to you was uh, in person. And uh, you, was, you were talking to somebody else. But you was going on. This is before. This is before people seeing what Nipsey did. This is before Black Lives. This is before all of that Black Lives Matter. All of this stuff was happening. You were speaking so passionately about investing in the community, and you were talking about how 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 Hyro need a Hyro uh, spot, and you know HBK need to get together and do something in Richmond. Like you you was going on and on and on. You you still feel that way? About, you know, right now you can't do shit, but um, right, right. Essentially, essentially, I feel that people do need to like a lot of times these um, even like even situations with like me, even when you say the Mars Volta, like honestly, if we all did a record, it would probably be fucking killing, even if it was three or four drummers on that motherfucker. But right. it's hard to get people with these prideful issues and. Just human, bro. To have a band together to do something for the greater good is so difficult. So sometimes I speak from a perspective of I wish this was possible. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, Hyro is like the Bay Area Wu Tang. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah. They, like, they like they in movies, bro. They like yep. so raw. They so talented. They got DJs. They got rappers. They got graffiti artists. Like as a hip hop group in the Bay. They should have a store. They got all the merch. They got hella CDs. You know what I mean? But I'm not. I'm also not in their business. I'm not in right. their business plan. I'm just looking from the outside looking in because I respect them and I know a few of them. But yeah, I do think we um, should invest in places that used to be the black community. Cause uh, <laughs> yeah. you see, <laughs> you know. But it's all you know. It's all it also takes having, you know, I think everybody, everybody can't do everything. You know what I mean? For me, when I say about Hyro, the reason I say that is I know they will move a lot of numbers out of the store. You know what I mean? Yeah. They already move hella numbers online. And people from the Bay, people, dude, I, I see people in Japan, people all over the world with Hyro shirts. You know what I mean? Like, more than anybody, more, more than Wu-Tang, I see Hyro everywhere. So, for me, you know, I have so much pride in people who do shit in the Bay. So I'm like, and I know that we would support, like we support Dope Era Store right. or we support um, Beast Mode. Like it's like, mm -hmm. we're already supporting people. It just needs to be more of it. You know what I mean? Just because, you know, some of these places out here, I don't even know who's open anymore, but um, like some of these people here, like the thing about the Bay is this ridiculous amount of money here. It's it's like so much money here for how people's how for, for what people actually spend it on. It's like people spending all this fucking money to have a house in a location that you care about, and then they go outside and they act broke. You know what I mean? Because they probably are broke because the rent is fucking high. But at the same time, if this money could be circulated into the community and to the people, this place could be thriving like motherfuckers who are actually from here really wanted it to be. Like people, we saw this, we saw the lake, you know, being able to be cracking and we saw the Fox when it was boarded up and we used to drive by there and say, this could be amazing. We used yeah. to see all this shit and say, it could be amazing. It took people to, from outside to come put a bunch of money in, but now they have raised, they, 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 they kill They're killing the culture because they're pricing people out. And it's like, so how far do you do that? Do you price, do you price the culture out to a point where it's just like, what is this? I mean, 
I just think these people who do that, they just don't have no soul. So it's like, how do you, it's like reasoning with a person that, it's like talking to a brick fucking wall. So it's like, yes, I want to invest, but I'm just trying to figure out how. How would it be beneficial to the people here? See, uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a mindset that really needs to, to change to that. Because for just the average person, like, for instance, Ernie and I, we, we share the same mentality when it comes to like, let's say clothing. Mm-hmm. For instance, like if, if we need, you know, like, oh man, I really want to pick up, you know, a, a couple of new shirts, maybe a cap or something like that. We're not going to go on like Amazon and just look up whatever shirt or whatever. First place that I would look like Oaklandish. Like, let me see how, how can I like buy something that I'm going to like that's dope. That's still putting back to the town that I was born in. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's just a mentality of like being willing to seek uh, services that the Bay Area provides where it's just a, a constant give and take of that love and, and everything. Exactly, man. Yeah. I want to start a restaurant, bro. What Dude. Kind of, man, I want to start a, I want to start like, you know, everybody else got a fusion restaurant, bro. They got like Asian, Mexican. I go to spot in El Cerrito. They got. They got bulgogi burritos, and I'm like, where, see, where, where, what? Right, it's what? called <laughs> clothes. It's called um, it's right there um, called Super. I think it's Super Burrito. I think that shit's over there by Subway, over in El Cerrito, over there by Baskin the by, not Baskin Robbins. It's by Bank of America, and across the street from um, that fucking. It's like right now, down the street from where the Guitar Center used to be. Yeah, it's like mm. uh. Is it is it by that liquor store over there? Yep, it's by that liquor store and um, the Chinese restaurants. Before you get to Nations, uh, it's like by that El Salvadorian spot. I know what you're talking about. Mm. They got Korean barbecue burritos. So my, idea, <laughs> so my my idea is it's like that's kind of how I like to cook too. So it's like I want to have okay. a spot have like you know i want chicken wings but i also want to have brussels sprouts and i also want to have like sushi sometimes and i also so i want to have all this shit in one spot ah so um yeah i think fusion i think it's, that'd be good I, for the stoners yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't like to make food we don't care what the name is you know it's like it's like you know people are amazed that like you know tyler the creator man he's such a genius because he got a festival and all these kids love rock and all these kids love rap, and all these kids love fucking Kaylani. They love singing. You know what I mean? We all like good music, just like mm-hmm. we all like good food. So my idea is to like kind of close the boundaries and just have good food. I'm with it. I meant to have my little fucking um, my little uh, fucking Hawaiian drink, but I couldn't make it in time. Even what you about to make like a mai tai or something? <laughs> That little tropical. <laughs> <laughs> the little umbrella and everything. <laughs> well, you got you got the hat and shirt. You, right. you can't, uh, Daniel. We can't put the waves in the in the uh, put the beach behind them. <laughs> oh, is that possible? I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, cause the green screen. I've never, I've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> he he'd be back. Be back. Yeah, <laughs> do some fun edit with that one. But hey, so when I tell people, uh, oh yeah, uh, Thomas Pritchard is coming through. He needs to get this, and, or yeah, Thomas Pritchard just needs to get this for this price. Uh, when you when you got to come through the spot where you normally see us, mm-hmm. and uh. They 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 flip out. Yeah. Oh my God! Who are you? Do you know who you're talking about? Do you know who that is? And I have to respond to him like, Yeah. Do you know people act like that? Are you aware that people think like like feel like that when your name is mentioned? Yeah. You, yeah. It's. I mean, for me, it's like just because people do it, don't mean I gotta act like people do it. Yeah. I just thought it was a little strange. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people. People, you know, that's the that's the that's the that's the give and take about this shit is like a lot of man, that's 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 a large part of 2020. 
a large part of 2020 for me, you know, like this COVID shit has has completely has completely destroyed that shit that you're talking about. All right. Because now people are like, oh, I want to go live. And they go live, they don't put no lotion on. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe having the boogers in the eyes. <laughs> they don't, they don't yeah. be in the background. They don't, they don't, they don't care, bro, because they so after clout. Right. So it's like, for me, I've always, everybody who meets me, they always be like, damn, this motherfucker is smoking with me. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. you know, so I don't, I know they do that, but like, I don't know. I understand it because I've done it with people too. I'd be like, God damn, I always wanted to meet you. Like I never met Tony Allen, bro. I would have I would have did that with Tony Allen because I always wanted to meet him. He's just so hard. I've never been in the same place as him. So mm-hmm. but I get it, you know. I'm a fan of music too, bro. I'm a fan of, you know, if I seen Eddie Murphy, bro, I'd probably do that shit with Eddie Murphy. I'd probably be like, bro, yeah. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a- <laughs> As somebody, as somebody who uh, came up so young in the game, who who, who were you looking? Who who were your uh, uh, musical inspirations? Um, or still are? Uh, well, see, I had like like the drummer. I won't mention drummers. I just mentioned like artists. Like, um, mm-hmm. so I used to fucking sit, spend all my time. Like when walking, you know, with the headphone fucking CD player that you try to shake it, it wouldn't skip, you juice because it wouldn't skip. Like mm-hmm. I had, and I would go to Berkeley High and just walk around and it'd be, you know, 10 o'clock, Amoeba and Rasputin's open. So I would rush up there to go get the Erica Badu CD that had like Poojee Bell on drums. And so mm-hmm. I was always, I always knew when the new record was coming out and I was always going to go look for shit. So I was listening to Gonzalo Rubicawa, piano player. Um, listening to Square Pusher. Square Pusher. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Mike Alberg got me into Meshuggah real early. And then, um, so I was listening to, like, that whole combination of shit was crazy because it was, like, Square Pusher and then Apex Twin. And then it was, like, a few other dudes that were dope. Um, and then I was also in that moment when it was, like, um, not dubstep, but you remember Trip Hop? Yeah, I remember Trip Hop. <laughs> yeah. I was around yeah. that. Like 2007, 2008? It was a little earlier, 2003-ish, 2000. Oh, okay. But yeah, the Trip Hop Jungle, that shit, I used to love that. So I would buy sampler CDs that have like different DJs. And recently, I still have some of those CDs and I look for the artists on iTunes and the music's still up there. So I got like still a, up there. Yeah, I got a Jungle playlist. So I was listening to Jungle, Drum and Bass a lot. Um, listening to Jay Dilla all the time because I thought I was fresh. Oh, yeah. I was fresh because nobody was up on him. Like, real talk, as many people, um, you know, respect him and love him, it was a lot of people who didn't know who the fuck he was when when he was lit. When he was lit, when he was lit, half these dudes that's making tributes and records and fucking doing, just fucking saying his name all the time. They didn't they know who he was. No music like that. They wasn't, they wasn't even, they wasn't even, they wasn't even smoking weed, much less playing some music like that. They wasn't even in the headspace to even understand what that shit was even about, bro. They, they didn't even really even listen to hip hop. Let's get, let's just get solid. So I was, I saw, I saw Slum Village in the Bay Area, bro, when Jay Dilla was doing this shit off two NPCs, bro. I was going out this shit. I was going out this shit. Um... One of my best friends still to the right now, Brian Collier, um, when I was 15, he was- The sneaking, comedian. Yeah, he would, not Brian Collier the drummer, he was sneaking me oh. into, he would sneak me into the Paramount. He was sneaking me into all kind of shit. Cause what we would do, well he would get like a laminate, like a fake laminate, and he would, he would walk in early into the show and then he would just act like he the manager. So he just walk, <laughs> walk somebody else in. So we seen like uh, Jimmy Wine, um, with Nissan, we seen um, Cisco, we seen um, dude, everybody, Avant, um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh. Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, hell yeah. Lodge, we seen everybody, dude, we seen everybody who came to the Paramount, we seen them for free. We were sneaking in there when I was 15. So I was, 
I was seeing these people backstage, and I would get to see like you know, um, I don't know if you know, but the dudes who did all a lot of that Aaliyah and Genuine and Timberland. That was like that era was like one of the sickest eras for me too. I love that shit when they came out the Neptunes all that shit. So I was getting to see how they was doing that shit live. So that was inspiring me too, because I'm like, oh shit, they running two NPCs before people was running Pro Tools. People was running right. beat and shit. So I was inspired by, you know, the live bands and the, the R&B shit, like fucking No Limit. I used to love Soldier Swim. I used oh, yeah. to love um, Fiend, Mystical, because I'm I'm from Richmond. I live in Richmond, so they had they had Richmond sewn up for a little bit. Richmond was all about New Orleans music. You know what I mean? Yeah, TRU. Yeah, after Katrina, after cause Master P used to live here. Yep. Master P yeah. Started here. So, um, so we was all about New Orleans shit, Hot Boys, um, <laughs> all that shit. You know, the fucking Bone Thugs and Harmony, fucking Triple Six, fucking everybody. Like, so I was highly in the streets on that bullshit. But I also grew up in church, so I got to see Kirk Franklin, John P. Key. I was inspired by everything that was music, bro. Um, my drum teacher in Concord, Rafael Reyes, he, um, he's 80s, he's in the 80s, he's a Cuban drummer, and he'd be like, you heard of Chunquito, you heard of this guy, you heard of this guy, so I was getting Aladdin shit, I was getting Horacio, but I also lived here, so I was seeing, you know, E-40 and Kick and yeah. was, all the shit, you know what I mean, Not anything musical, because this, the thing about growing up in the Bay is that if you go to LA, you got to come here to perform. So you would see mm -hmm. everybody, they, they play Yoshi's, or they play Kimball Z's back in the day, Kimball. or they play um, the Paramount, you know what I mean? It's like, or the mm -hmm. Oracle, or, you know, the Coliseum, what it was called. So I was, I was seeing everything. I don't know. I, I was inspired by music, bro. Everybody. Anybody who was picking up the drumsticks, I was trying to see it, you know? I don't know. See. Isn't the Bay hella interesting where in, in our, you know, bubble, we know like everything that's hot. Like we go to all these shows and we, ha we have this slang, we have this culture, but then when you branch out, like if you go to like New York, you go to LA, you go to Chicago, you see all these little like hints of how the Bay's influenced all these little places. You know what I mean? They stole our Shit, hella is everywhere. I'm hearing hella in every rap song. I'm seeing people say <laughs> live they movies. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I used to go places, they make fun of me for saying it. Right? Uh LA, especially for me. Yeah. They were like, why do you keep saying that? Yeah. Or going stupid. We starting to hear Drake say going stupid. Everybody saying going stupid. We like, God yeah. damn, it's so hard. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you could just see these little remnants of Bay Area and, and things like that. Yeah. What, so, so how 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 you been keeping busy? Uh, I've been keeping busy. Okay, when okay, so when COVID started, bro, I was I was already in my mind before it started. I was in my mind like, you know, it's gonna come a time that I can't go on tour all the time because <laughs> it's like it's like I, I, I could be in my mind like, how do I keep a family together if like, you know, how, how do I, how do I do, how do you do this forever? You know what I mean? How did, how is Dave Grohl doing this? How is his girlfriend not killing him? And, you know, and, you know, he probably take her around with him. You know what I mean? Sometimes I can't do that shit. So my relationships with what fail and like, you know, I get home and, you know, shit just different with my kids sometimes. So I'm like, man, I got to figure out how to maneuver. How many kids do you have? I got two. Okay. I had to maneuver through like, you know, trying to figure out how to be a tour musician. So my idea was I'm going to record and I'm going to teach. So I, I kept my lockout spot and I, I was already collecting the gear for the studio, but I wanted to get like soup. I wanted to get all the UA shit. So I was like, man, I'm the same up, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when COVID started, I was like, fuck it. I'm about to just get the shit that's going to work. And then like the shit that, you know, that I decided to get, man, was beyond my belief, you know what I mean? I ended up getting a personas like interface and I got a bunch of stuff like mics, Earthworks hooked me up with mics and I already had a good relationship with um, um, Brian Matheson at uh, Skyline. So he gave me mic stands and mic, some mic cables. So a lot of my friends helped me piece it together with lights and you know, 
And so, like, you know, we painted the fucking green screen on the shit, you know. So we we basically set up to be able to do a multimedia type of situation. And GoPro, or I already had a deal with GoPro, so they hooked me up with a bunch of cameras. And, and I've already recorded uh, records by myself. Like, I, were, I would record um, and have, like, the whole shit by the drums and be recording the whole band. So I was already used to doing that shit. So when this happened, I was like, you know what, I'm going to record and I'm going to do lessons. And I'm just gonna do content because I'm already I'm already good at that shit. I just I just I really just wanted to I wanted to be a real musician. Like a lot of the dudes that's like a lot of the dudes that's like doing the content shit, they ain't never really did nothing. They ain't never played nothing. They ain't playing on two gigs ain't shit. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these dudes ain't really did shit. They ain't have they don't have no work experience. So when they when they tell you something and they show you some shit. The guys who are working, they just be like, whatever, bro. You don't have no gigs. So for me, I just concentrated on playing with people that I respected. Like, you know, that's, that's been my whole shit. Like, I would quit. I said no to a bunch of shit. People were like, why would you ever say no to that? Dude, did you? I, bro, I, bro, they asked me to go audition for Dream Theater, and I said no. Hell no. <laughs> that shit was bad. Hell no. <laughs> You know what I mean? But I got yeah. I, I dig it, bro, and I only want to play with people that I, I really have to love the music. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I want to fuck with your music. I want to fuck with you as a person. So, so I've been doing lessons and teaching, and like, you know, when you was talking about my network, so I got friends from South America and Europe. So, you know, I, I have one hour where I'm teaching somebody in fucking LA, and then I'll be teaching somebody in Spain, and I'll be teaching somebody in Australia. So, you know, every averaging the three to four lessons, and then I go to the studio and I record. I, I see, I see you in the, I see you in the studio. You had to go bang on the, uh, somebody's door the other day. I was cracking up. Yeah, man. <laughs> OMC, OMC is dope. You know, because they let it stay open, and you know, but a lot of people ain't even in there. Right. So I thank God for them. That's one of the businesses that we need to have in the Bay even more. It's not enough places for musicians to be able to play. You yes, know? yes, not no studios, really. You know, I, I've been talking to people. I talked to the guy who owns the Fox. I told him, I'm like, bro, if you open the rehearsal studio, it's going to go crazy because everybody needs a place to play. You can't play in these homes, man. These people, I'm spending this kind of money. I don't want to hear shit. You're like, fuck you, but you'll, 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 you'll fuck around and your neighbors won't be looking out for you. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. need, need that neighborhood camaraderie. Mm-hmm. So you 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 do pretty good uh, doing the lessons. How you be booked, huh? I'm booked doing lessons, and I'm like, and I've I've been doing it. Like I was, I've been teaching in person for a minute, and then like teaching online is a lot different because you have to figure out you can't play as loud. This shit can't be loud because if it's too loud, the bandwidth on Zoom, the bandwidth on uh, Skype, it'll all start crushing. It's too loud, and it'll yeah. break up. We, we've seen that with uh, Teddy Riley. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that type of shit. So what I try to do is I had to figure out how to make a curriculum that works for online. So, mm -hmm. um, and like going to, going to Berkeley School of Music was a fucking blessing because a lot of people don't know how to teach. Like they don't know, they don't really know what the fuck they doing, bro. And then the guys, and then there are some guys who really do know what they are doing. But, you know, it's a lot of guys who don't. And we're at this, this crazy scramble period where everyone just needs money. So you see, you know, uh, a thing going on every other minute. I got a live, I got a live, I got a magic, I got a magic, I'm teaching, I'm teaching, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. So people don't know who to go to. So I just try to make sure my shit has a solid platform. And, a, um, and yeah, so it's working. It's working right now. In, in a way, what you're doing is probably like the the best way to substitute not playing gigs because we're all home and we all need to play. So now like, I'm sure there's an influx of like all these online you know, people just flooding you with like, Oh, uh, I want to get a lesson in, but you're saying people from Spain, people from like all over the world. So it's not, it's, it's more wider range now. Is that what you're saying? The world is quarantined, bro. The whole world is on quarantine. It's got, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, all at the house. So it's like, for me, you know, so I want to bring this up on here, man. So my issue, my issue with these guys, that's like, you know, 
I love Teddy Riley. I love Babyface. I love Quest Love. I love all of these dudes as human beings. Word. But the shit that I have a problem with is that they all know that this is such a meager, a meager existence for musicians, and they are so huge that these are platforms that, at this point, YouTube, IG, Facebook, um, all these companies are media companies that specialize in visuals. So they're not audio companies. They're visual companies. They spend their time making sure that that shit look clear as fuck and make sure you can see these videos in a timely manner. So my issue with them, with these people that are so big, is that not only are they not promoting anyone that is under them, is that they are watering down this shit and making it where people who need the money, who need the streams, who need the monetization, they, they will have a hard time getting it. And so a lot of guys, they were like, man, when this COVID shit started, they was like, yeah, man, I'm going to go record. I'm like, okay, if you go record, if you go finish your album right now, you still got to do visuals because people are not going to iTunes like they are on Instagram, how they are on these places. So I have, a, yeah. I have a problem with these people because they are bending, they are bending to demand. Like I watched the Erica Badu post and she mentioned something and I'm paraphrasing, but she mentioned something where she said she was making pennies from iTunes. And I'm like, if you, if you look at how many people fuck with Erica Badu who is famous and rich and no music and a musician, you know, all these people, she has the fucking platform to be able to raise awareness to how bad we are treated from these streaming companies. Right. From Spotify, from iTunes, from YouTube, from Instagram, all of these people are benefiting off the music industry. They're making fucking ridiculous amounts of money. Majority of the big, the, one of the biggest industries in America is entertainment. If we don't have nothing else over all these other places, we got entertainment down. From movies to the music, now our streaming services, Netflix, all these people, that's what we have to go to. But instead of these people raising awareness to the shit, they're bending to it and they're undercutting themselves. I'm like, you're doing a lie for a dollar? I'm like, well, if you do it for a dollar, how much does a person who has no following need to do it for? Is this, are we digitally panhandling at this point? We fucking passing around the cup online? Yes. Why? Because we got people like Teddy Riley and people like Babyface going on there with four million people and not monetizing this shit so we can all make money, bro. We've been getting robbed the whole time, bro. Like, you know, these companies, these companies, they had to get people like, um, like they had to get Michael Jackson. They had to get the Beatles. They had to get Elvis. They had to get these people, the who? The Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. They had to get these people on their sites to, 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 to verify their fucking quality and if they were legit. Yep. Print, yeah. remember Prince was fighting about. So they've been trying to get these big guys on here. So a lot of these guys who have the power over the over power of attorney over these albums have gotten paid off. The Quincy Joneses, these people, they've been getting paid off. It's no fucking way Michael Jackson's album should be on iTunes getting a penny per play. And I don't believe it is. So my question is, why do we have to suffer? And for the people who don't know, iTunes and Spotify is paying people a penny per play on each stream. So if if you have a label deal and the label is cutting you 60-40 and you getting 60% of your fucking dollar, you made 60 or oh, 60% of a penny, basically. You made 60% of a penny mm-hmm. a play. So how many, okay, if it costs 10000 fucking dollars to do a record, which it probably costs way more art, video, promo, fucking paying all the musicians, how many fucking plays do you need to pay off $10,000? That's the problem. Dude, a, a one play on Spotify is a fraction of a cent. Like, it's not even, a, it's like a extremely small fraction of a cent. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's, you know why? The, uh, there, I totally agree with you. There's, there's value to art, you know? Like, I, 
on the flip side of this, I've heard people argue, um, Earn knows who some of these people are. Uh, they think that all art should be free. Now, anybody who says all art should be free has, is, does not live off art. They have a different job that pays them. You it's know different. what I'm saying? No, because, no, no, no. It's not even the, the part of the art. If, even if you felt the art should be free, the time that it takes to make the art ain't free. That's the thing. So it's exactly. like, a lot of times when we pay a lawyer, we're not paying for him to do shit, but we paying for the time that he's using. When you, when you get an automotive mechanic, you paying for the time that it takes for him to do it. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Yeah, but, but like there has to be some attachment to like a like value. Like there's there's value and meaning to this art. So there has you know. That's why. Uh, yeah, it's just, time it's, time is the most valuable thing we have. Right, bro. I mean, this that's that, that is the problem that I have with what's going on right now. Because people are trying to monetize streaming, bro. I just saw an article where they said people are having drive-through concerts. Did you see that? I did see that. What? I, did see I didn't that. see that shit. What? I did see that. I seen the drive through strip club too. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm sure we have a video on this show about that. You pull in and you get one or two songs with the Go-Go's and then we bring your food out to you and then you go on your way. We created barricades. It's 18 and over. We're handing out free rolls of toilet paper to like the first 50 or 60 cars. <laughs> I'll find one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Oh, well, Jesus. Life as a musician is going is for, I think it's forever changed. Yeah, I would agree. It's the entertainer, I, period. No, no matter what, I mean, like, I, you know, right off the bat, so many things are going to change inside buildings that we're allowed to go into. Uh, think about venues. The max capacity for sure is going to go down to, you know, maybe from like 500 in a certain venue to let's say like 300 so we can have more space apart, which means less money that you can get in for a gig, which means this and that. There's going to be a chain reaction from this for sure. Yeah, man. I remember 9-11 remember how like when it first happened, we was like, oh shit, them towers. And then we flew, and then they were they were searching our balls and making us take our shoes. <laughs> yeah. Off. And it's like it's like, I mean, so for me, like those, I don't, I'm not fully aware of the argument of the people who are outside protesting, but I do understand what they're coming from when it comes to like the idea of what the government can do and how how you know how nutty, you know, we all have we. Dude, we all went in the house, bro. We all went in the house with no questions asked. We we type our questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We was marching online. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. They threaten us with our parents dying and kids dying. Fuck it. Let's go in the house. And so for me, I understand where they are. I just don't I just don't understand what they want. And I don't understand what's the what's the outcome of this other than to make it where Everyone is scared of each other, and we need mm -hmm. we need each other to boost our immune system. We need sunshine to boost our immune system. So it's like music. We need music, bro. This shit is therapy. So it's like mm -hmm. I just feel like these people are um, these people are locking us up, and a lot of the people who um, and even and my my issue my, what I'm saying really is that I don't have a problem with people speaking out. Because at least you fucking speaking out something. Let's let's throw let's throw around the fucking the, the virtual conversation or some shit. Let's let's yeah. actually have this conversation. So it's not so it's not like religion or politics where well you know well this is politics but it's not like religion where it's like if you talk about it motherfuckers gonna kick you out their house you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like we need to have this conversation so people. So people can know what to do. Like having motherfuckers immediately go on like hundreds of live streams and just perform. That, that was the wild. time people could have do. That was I don't even think people on the internet like they were the first week. The first huh. week of COVID, dude, oh, it was first week of COVID, bro, people could have said so much, bro. And I'm like, man, <laughs> this is why we don't have Bob Marley. This is why we don't got Tupac. This is why we don't got Prince. We don't got Michael Jackson because they knew, man, they could not have them type of people here 
with these asshole motherfuckers who just want clout. I love that you're saying that. You should question everything off top. Because it seems like, it, it's, it's crazy to me that we, we shut down so hard everywhere. Uh, when it seems like it's the East Coast that needed to, to heal. You know, New, yeah. New York and these places that were getting hit really hard. You know, those places needed to shut down. Um, but I don't see like the whole country being shut down because I was saying like it's it's places where it ain't even really hit it. It's they the shut down. Whole world, bro. Huh? It's in South America. They shut down in Colombia. Well, yeah, it's the world. Yeah, I'm just talking about here. <laughs> I was talking about here in particular, but yeah, it's the world. Right. Yeah. Anytime, anytime, anytime it's like that, it's like, bro, they ain't never gave a fuck about our health, bro. Mm -mm. My grandma passed away uh, off cancer. They didn't give a fuck. They wasn't, they wasn't like, go see Dr. Sabi. They wasn't saying, get right. it, be on an alkaline diet. They didn't say, man, motherfuckers got out of, of, of fucking heart disease. They don't be like, stop smoking. They do say stop smoking them cigarettes, but they sell them bitches. They sell liquor. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's like, okay. So you guys care about our, our shit so much now? Mm -hmm. I just can't, like, my heart, like, like just like I can't say that there's no aliens, like, I've never seen an alien. But I cannot tell you with a benefit, with a, no doubt in my mind that there's no aliens at all. I cannot say that. So I cannot say that this is not bullshit. I can't. I can't say that from the bottom of my heart that this is not bullshit. Oh, I, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm not saying that. I wouldn't go that far, but but uh, <laughs> go, go, government, I know you're listening to this. Government, I I, I do not agree with them. <laughs> we are just we're just speaking freely. We're just Amer <laughs> Americans speaking freely. We're just freedom of speech, First Amendment. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate you. I appreciate you sitting down with us, man. Hell yeah, man. I love y'all show, bro. I've been watching y'all shit laughing, bro. <laughs> we gonna we gonna we gonna have a clip with that drive through strip club on this one. I like it. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. I like it, man. Oh man, what you about? What you about to get into, Daniel? Oh, you talking to me? Yeah, I'm about what to you about I'm, to get into? I'm about, you about to, to play you. some of them keyboards. Oh no, <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna make some dinner, but I'm gonna work on some songs after that, though. For sure. I didn't. I don't know if you know this, but did you know that the, who makes the iRig? I came multimedia. multimedia. Okay. Well, the iRig is now the musician's toilet paper. Oh, bro! That's what I've been hearing. They're sold out everywhere. Why? I mean, did they see how shitty it was when like the fucking like Rizzo and Premier tried to do that and like Teddy Rat like the iRig? Is I, uh, that's what Davy. That's what Davy D was uh, calling me about a uh, couple weeks ago. Everybody, bro, it's toilet paper, bro. I looked at musicians' friend. <laughs> they they all gone. I bought one from musicians' friend. They sent me an email talking about actually they don't have it. I was like, bro, I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> they promised this to somebody, right? Oh my god! This and, and this all has to do with what you were talking about with the with the streaming. Yeah, I mean we. I mean, I think what I'm gonna use it for is because I want to go live, and I want I want to go live just to like let people hear me recording to people's songs, so they can hear the music and me playing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Word, yeah. word, word. That's original. Because then you get to see the process. Like you get to see, you get to see how. Like, dude, I I haven't I I've been recording, but I haven't noticed how difficult it is to play something 15 times and then to go to a different project. And then try to go learn that again and then play that with the same tenacity. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay. So I, I like I like that I can I don't mind I don't mind fucking up and failing on camera. Like, you know, for me to not or to like <laughs> mess up something that, that doesn't to me it doesn't matter. Cause it's like I'm just gonna do it again anyway. Cause you, you right. know it always been. It's been like a fucking I fall like I grew up in a skateboard culture. You know what I mean? Just like Word. You fall, you get up, you do it again. You fucking fall, you do it again. It's it's the process. So mm -hmm. I, I want. That's what's I, supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. So I want to use the eye rig so I can show people me recording in real time, and not have to like edit and do some 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 fucking production mm -hmm. or post. Do something that's not watered down. Yeah. 
you know, something new. So that's I. Where where did you did you find that video of that uh of that of that dog getting a lap dance? <laughs> send it to me. I'll try to send it to you. You said what? Send it to you. All right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you see how the see how that motherfucker's paws are just like just sitting. <laughs> People send me the most funny shit, brother. <laughs> Is that how you get it? People be sending you stuff? Yes, bro. I, oh. People, people send me shit, and I follow people who post shit, and I'll be like, bro, send me that. <laughs> and they'll oh. send me shit. Oh, man. I, I fell out when I saw that. Oh, me too. Me too. Yeah, it's like, man... I think, you know, I think, it's, I think this shit brings a certain amount of creativity out. I just think yeah. that it's like... Um, you know, I think now it's kind of crazy because, like, with this, like, we've been all can, like, really, really concerned with audio. And now that this visual audio thing has come together, where it's like, you could, like, if you release an album right now and you don't got no visuals, that shit ain't gonna sell. Right. You know what I mean? That's so, true. That's gotta have visuals. See, that's and, what, yeah. Mm hmm. Like, so if you got, like, if you are, like, a drummer that can play and you got, you know how to make the sound good and you know how to make the videos good, you won. You know what I mean? But some people don't know how to make the video. They don't got, they got the audio shit down. And so I'm trying to get this video shit down. You ever seen the Anamorphic Lens? Anamorphic. Yeah, it's a company called Moment. They make anamorphic lenses. They make all kind of iPhone lenses. It's fucking. Oh. I mean, it's something that you literally like attach to your. Is it like one of the big right? ones? No, it's not hella big. It's kind of small, and they they they're like hundred and twenty bucks. They look like, like they look like red cams, bro. Oh. Oh, That's it's so it turns it onto like you know like to a DSLR level yeah. of quality. Oh. That's that's the that's the game, bro. These little small things that just make that can make your home setup just seem so much more sicker. With your phone. With your phone, man. My personas, dude. I got the personas mixer for four fifty on eBay. Oh, which one? Got, which one? I got the sixteen two zero. The Do first one. He's, ta he's talking about the board. Yeah. I got, yeah, yeah. That little digital one. Okay. Word. I, word. Word. Sounds great, and I got Earthworks mics. Mm. That's back in. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, Man. so now it's like, you know, some of these dudes, these people, you know, when I saw when I saw Babyface, I was cracking the hell up. Cause he was in front of that damn SSL. I'm like, nobody uh -huh. don't do that shit no more. No, no. nobody even <laughs> nobody even cares about that shit. Bro, Ain't and, nobody no, in the studio using that. No. Bro, SSL made an uh, interface that's like $250. You saw that? No. No. SSL got a fucking um, got a, a digital interface. That's like cheap. same word. What a guy, bro. <laughs> solid, uh, bro. SSL. I, I, gotta, I gotta see there's that. A, there's a solid state logic interface. That's crazy. I gotta see that too. Yeah, all this, all this new. They built. They're building it so we all can be in our little fucking cubicle. How long do you think it's gonna be like this though? I think we're gonna. I think it's gonna be to till about June. Till June. Mm-hmm. You said one more month. Well, yeah, I think we're gonna go through this whole month. That's it. I think I think there's I gonna be phases. Like certain things are going to open up, like restaurants will start maybe opening up after June, but at like a really small capacity. And <laughs> it's just it's just gonna slowly start to, you know, trickle out where it gets back to normal. But it's never gonna be normal though. It's this never gonna be the same. This is how I feel like they should have did it. I feel like they should be like, okay, if you in a, like a small ice creamery, y'all can have like two people. If you're in a, a regular restaurant, y'all can have a certain amount of people. If you're in a giant factory, y'all shouldn't have to hold up to the same uh, qualifications as other people. Some of these music companies are having a real issue because they can only have about five people in the business. But if the factory is 7,000 square feet, five people is like, you, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so it's like, some of that shit could be, you know, dealt with a little bit. I think, I think, man, I, I'm going to tell you the truth, bro. I think this shit going to be like this to the end of, to the end of the summer. To the end of the summer. Mm. Yeah, I think they want to, I think they want 
I think they want to. I think they want to kill people's pockets, especially. Yeah. If, so you think it goes deeper than, than? Yeah, because okay. Trump gave them an option. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah, he he has been given. You talking about what he gave the governors? Yeah, he gave them an I option. Saw that. So if you in one of the if you in one of the states where they want the property. Mm -hmm. If you in one of the states where they want to gentrify the fuck out of it, the easiest way to gentrify everything is make everybody um, financially unstable. Word. Because people who are buying up everything are billionaires, and they buying fucking ten houses at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you go to, you go to Oakland. I, I, yeah. My my lady's old studio. She had a studio apartment when I met her, and it was just you know a little living room with a kitchen and a bathroom. She was paying, I think, seven hundred for it. That thing is that thing is going for two thousand dollars now. Jeez, and two thousand. And a lot of people are moving out. A lot of people are moving out right now, bro. Because people are leaving. People are like, I'm going. To, I want to live in California for work. They come out here for work, and then and then now it's no work, so they go back home. So I've been hearing about people from LA that's went back home. People from here that's went back home. So a lot is people moving out at a time like this right now. Migrations, yeah. Flying out the country and everything. Moving down south. Yep. That's what I'm like. I'm like, dude. I think this is gonna last a little, a little longer because Gavin Newsom, bro. He want to be president, bro. I can tell. Yeah, yeah for sure. He want to yeah. be president. Batman thinks he could be president. Right? Yeah. Ain't no, ain't nobody from Memphis voting for Gavin Newsom. No, <laughs> no, I don't know. Who do they vote for? Are they Republicans? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anybody down south? Man, yeah, man. <laughs> Memphis, bro. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's hard to get this. Hard to get the uh, people from Mississippi and, and places like that to come around. That's true. You think they gonna vote for Biden? I think they like. Uh, I think they like the. I, I think that most. Biden most can't people even talk, like the, that Trump energy. Most people like that Trump energy. I like, like his energy. I like his energy too. <laughs> I like his energy too. He's a fucking. He. The reason I don't like him. I don't like who he is. But I think. Out of, I think that out of these two candidates, I think Biden is the most like. Like it's like. This is my issue. My issue is that no one would know what to do at a time like this. Like, no one. Obama would not know what to do. No one would know what to do at a time like this. This has never happened. So it's like, you know, my homeboy today, he was like, would, who would you pick if you could pick anybody alive to be president? And I was like, hmm. Damn. I pick myself. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Thomas I was good. 2024, man. You know, right. so my, my idea was, you know, if you don't, you know, you, you, it's no one will be able to really maneuver through this. And I feel like since Biden is so, Biden is so like fucking, Biden is, Biden can't have a conversation with me. No. He can't have a conversation, period. His brain bro, is just gone. Bro. Up in a conversation, bro. Just like, just talking, just asking him questions, bro. He would be. <laughs> And and I'm not presidential. I'm not, you know, I'm just I'm just me, but like neither is the president. Yeah, but it's like if I can do it, like, you know, people who are super smart, you know, these guys have, you know, like for me personally, this is how I feel. Have you ever seen somebody in their 70s on Twitter? Okay. I haven't, no. Okay, well, we we've been going four years thinking that Trump is actually tweeting. And so my mind, my mind is this. I'm like, okay, if every star that I've ever seen in my life has a publicist and a PR person and someone to be like, don't do this. Even me. I've had people say, don't do this, right? <laughs> the moment you go and you make it where it's a, 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 a countrywide thing that you are stupid on the internet, yeah. <laughs> they're going to take it away from you. Yeah. So yeah. For, to still think that Trump is tweeting and we don't have one photo of him ever holding a phone? I'm trying to tell you that he got a lot of people behind him, bro, and it's all bullshit. It's all, it's all games, bro. They're not going to tell you the truth, and you just never know. He got people telling him what to do. So in my mind, I'm like, I'd rather somebody who is at least eloquent and when they speak, 
because we know that you're not doing, you're not really running this shit. Somebody else is telling you everything. They're feed force feeding you information. So I just, I don't know. I don't know if I trust that dude because he's so stupid. Is, and, but I feel like both, <laughs> of, both, of them pretty, both of them are pretty stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I feel like Trump has been in there long enough that he's already kind of balanced it a little bit where like Trump, Trump kind of, Trumpy, Trumpy, Trump, Trump be doing this too on their ass, bro. Because they be, he's the most hated motherfucker in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just imagine, Definitely. You know, everything they, you know, they were throwing shoes at his bush. You know, they throwing, they throwing <laughs> herbal shoes at this man. You know what I mean? So <laughs> for him to be doing this, you know, he he knows something. But Biden, they keeping him in the basement, bro. Yeah, they trying like, to. Don't speak. <laughs> don't talk. <laughs> Don't just stand there. Just look, look awake. <laughs> they trying. They trying to keep him in the basement. <laughs> so I want to. I want to vote for people that's not the president. I want to vote for the people that's lower levels that control other things, like you know, city to state. I don't. I, I don't really know much about it, so I'm about to have to do my research right now. I got a bunch of research I'm about to do. Yeah, on a city city council and things like that. Your sheriff, your local sheriffs. Yeah, I think that's better because it's like. I don't know. I feel like voting for the lesser two evils is really evil. It's like voting for two devils. It's like, okay, we got Satan and we got Satan too. Which one you want? It's like, <laughs> it's like, cause your, your conscience ain't gonna be cool when, when they make a bad decision anyway. You know what I mean? When they make a decision where it's like really fucked up, you're gonna be like, damn, I voted for him, but I thought. And then it's gonna also happen to this other guy because inevitably, the way the world is set up and the way the system is set up, America has done so much shady shit and it's built on shit that it is in, it's, it's, it's incapable of falling in shit. It's in, you're incapable of doing it. So it's like, I don't know, it's such a weird time. And I think that's what's making people have so much anxiety too, yeah. is the unknown. And that's why when you said <laughs> the end of June, I was like, that's how they doing us. They force feeding us like the first week, it was like a week. Then the second week, it's like two weeks. Then like three weeks. Now it's in the May. And then you're going to say June. <laughs> I was, you know, what it was funny is I was looking at my, uh, my, I had an email from my boss, you know, talking about, you know, the place is closed. And he, uh, and he's, and he said, looks like we should be back April 7th. We're looking at April 7th. Yeah. Right. Really? You know, and, then, and then my lady was supposed to go back to work, uh, May seventh, and then and then uh, then then uh, uh, the governor of San Francisco said it's pushed back for another month. So now we'll see what happens in June. Yeah, Coachella's October. <laughs> My name is Coachella. That's a wrap for Coachella. That's a wrap. Blood is over for <laughs> Coachella's over. Oh man, there was levels to this show. Hell yeah, it, it really was. There was some levels to this one. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's a lot deeper than I thought. And it even went longer than it was supposed to go. Yeah, yeah. Zoom didn't kick us off yet. So we did it. We did it. We did that thing, man. Well, it's supposed to be where you only get a 40 minute call. But uh, lately for, um, you know, just because of the coronavirus, they've been extending people's Zoom times. So that's what happened when we did Davey D and uh, they're allowing it now for you too. So. Got you. Yeah. Man, I love y'all, man. I'm about to be out of here. Love right, you too, Thomas. I appreciate Thank you man. for doing it, man. Love you, bro. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Peace.